Hi guys, this is Kiri with healthfullyroodedhome.com where I talk about clean cooking, non-toxic living, and an organized home. And today I'm gonna teach you guys about using cast iron skillets and the best oil to use when using cast iron skillets and how to season them, how to re-season them, and how to cook with them. So one disclaimer I will give you before I go into this video is that I know I do a lot of things the wrong way, but it's the way that works for me and all of my cast irons are completely non-stick and they were just seasoned really well and this is pretty much exclusively what I cook on. So these are the tips that work for me and I know that some of them, like I said, aren't the right way to do things, but I'm just going to give you what works for me. First, I'm going to go into how to season a cast iron if you just get it from maybe it's a hand-me-down and it wasn't seasoned properly or if you're buying the pan new and it's not pre-seasoned um, or even sometimes if I buy a new cast iron and it says it's pre-seasoned it's really not and so I'll just go through this method that I'm about to explain and I'll season it myself. All of my cast irons are all very well used and so I really don't have to season them again, but I'll just go through the process as if I were going to re-season them. So this process is something that I would say I really rarely ever have to re-season my cast irons. I would say maybe once or twice a year, but usually I'm using my cast irons so much that I just don't need to do that. So cast iron is one of those things that gets better with age. Rather, actually, it gets better with use. So if you use it more often, it's just going to get re-seasoned every single time you use it. And then you'll have to go through the process that I'm about to show you even less. So I'll show you what I do. So this is one of my cast irons. I actually got this cast iron from someone who just gave it to me and very well used cast iron. So I have had to re-season this a couple times. It's a super easy process. So first what I do is I preheat the oven to 450 degrees. I think if you Google it and you just say what to preheat your oven at to season a cast iron skillet, I think it says 400. Don't do 400, it's not hot enough, at least not for me, you know, in my experience. So 450 is important because when you do it at 400, it'll make the pan um, sticky after seasoning it. Even if you season it five times in a row, your pan's gonna have like this sticky film on it and you don't want that because then it's sticky, so things are gonna stick to it. What you want is this super smooth, shiny luster over the pan, and that is what's gonna make it non-stick. 450, high heat is key here. What I do first, before the oven is preheated, because it's gonna get really hot, so you don't wanna have your hands in there or anything, I lay some foil down at the bottom of the oven, or maybe like the bottom rack. A long strip like this, you open up the oven, and then put it in the bottom, like I said. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna protect your oven from getting any oil that drips from your cast iron. So that is an important step because you don't want your house to smell burnt. One thing I will suggest, if it's not too cold out, keep your windows open because even if you keep your oven shut, it can make your house smell a little smoky. So your oven is preheated to 450 degrees. Your foil is lined underneath the oven on the bottom rack and your windows are open if you know it's not too cold out. You have your cast iron pan and I use coconut oil. Grapeseed oil is what you'll read 
is like the best oil to use. I never have grapeseed oil. I always have coconut oil though. I get like the huge bulk size coconut oil from Azure Standard. And so um, it's just something that I always have on hand. The bottom line is that you want something that has a really high smoke point because number one, cast iron gets really hot when you what, with whatever you're cooking. But a lot of times you have to cook things in a cast iron in a really hot oven and you need it to be really well preheated when you're cooking things. But not only that, when you're seasoning it, like what we're about to do right now, you're putting it at a 450 degree oven. So you want an oil that has a really high smoke point. For me, coconut oil is what I use. You can use whatever oil you want, but I highly suggest it is an oil that has a really high smoke point. If not, you could ruin your cast iron. And also it's just not very healthy to you know, eat food that was cooked on a pan that has burnt oil on it. Okay, so I take my coconut oil and then I take a paper towel or a tea towel. I use a paper towel. I know, you know, some people might think that's super wasteful. I rarely have to do this though. So I'm okay with using one strip of paper towel <laughs> to do this. And I just take the paper towel and I just go directly in this container that I keep my coconut oil in. And I just scoop some, not a lot, but you know, like um, I would say maybe a teaspoon worth. And then I take my pan and I just coat the bottom and the sides of the pan with the coconut oil. And I just do that. Some people will also coat the handle and the bottom of the pan. I don't do that. I just do this, the surface. So the part where food is gonna touch, that's what I coat with coconut oil. You can do whatever you want, of course. I, I don't just because I, I found that when I did that, it just made my whole pan greasy. And I, I don't know, I guess I don't see the value of coating the outside, like the part that isn't touching food and that I don't need to be nonstick. It might protect the pan. I could see how maybe it would protect the cast iron and, and just the pan itself, maybe a little more, but I don't know. I take really good care of my pans and I don't ever let them air dry. So if there is a reason to do that though, and I just haven't thought of that reason, let me know in the comments below. So you coat the pan and by now your oven is probably close to being preheated. I will stick the, you're not cooking anything that has to cook at, you know, an even temperature. So I put it in there as soon as I have the pan coated, I put the pan in the oven because it doesn't need to be fully preheated. Okay, so then you put the pan in the, the preheating or preheated oven and you just let it sit there for at least an hour. I let mine sit for one hour in, at a 450 degree oven. I turn the oven off. I don't open it. I just click cancel on the oven and I let it completely cool off in the oven. So for like I don't even know how long it takes. I leave it in there for a couple hours. Then after I do that, I take it out and I see if it is seasoned to the point that I want it to be seasoned. If not, you just repeat the process. And I've had to do it. Actually, when I got this pan, it was in really bad shape. I had to do that, I think four times before it was perfectly nonstick. And after the fourth time, it was good. This method works so well for me. I have done it on one, two, three, four cast iron skillets. And I seriously have the confidence to, I could go to, you know, a thrift store and get a completely rusted out, non-seasoned cast iron and have the confidence to know that I could clean it up and season it and make it perfectly nonstick. So I love this process. One other thing to note is, okay, before you season your cast iron, I wish I had one to show you, but 
if you've ever seen cast iron, like if you're looking for a cast iron skillet on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, a lot of times you'll see they are, like I said, completely rusted out in really bad shape. Dirty, bad shape, you have to completely start from scratch. What you wanna do first before you season it is clean it. And so you'll wanna completely strip it. And this is not what you would do. So let's say you have a cast iron that you've been cooking on for a while, but for whatever reason, it needs to be re-seasoned. Don't strip it, okay? Um, but if you get one that's really old and gross, this is when you would wanna strip it. And what I do to strip it is you can use these little steel wool things, which a lot of people say don't use them on cast iron. I would say generally, yeah, use them as little as possible. But if you're stripping a cast iron because you got it in poor shape, definitely use this, right? Um, because your whole intent is to strip it. <laughs> so. Um, I would use this and I would even use soap and get all of that off there, completely strip it, and then go through the process that I just explained. Also what I find works really, really, really well with cast iron, and I can link everything that I use below, is one of these scrub brushes. So it has like the like close together bristles. I think this one is like bamboo bristles or something. and and then it has like a little scraper on the end. This is the perfect tool for me for just everyday cleaning a cast iron. Typically, because my cast irons are pretty darn non-stick, it's rare that I have something stick, but let's say I'm cooking meat or something and there's a little bit of meat that has stuck onto it, then I would use this. I try and just use the scraper because that's just kind of like using a spatula, right? Um, or sometimes they even just use a spatula to scrape whatever got stuck on there off. Um, and it's usually not stuck too hard and that works just fine. If there's kind of a film, sometimes you'll cook something and there's just like a film of whatever you cooked on it, um, I'll lightly use this. Okay, so that, that's a different topic, but stripping it, um, you could use either of these. All right, if you, if you do have to strip your cast iron, I would probably expect to have to do the re-seasoning process a couple times to get it all seasoned up. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually cook using the cast iron. There's two things that cast iron need, heat and fat, okay? So we're using, I use coconut oil most of the time. You can use bacon grease, you can use, again, you want a high smoke point, so. Let's see what else do I use. Avocado oil is what I use a lot. Those are your options, but heat and fat. Those are your number one drivers to make sure that your cast iron is nonstick. I'm gonna be cooking up some fried potatoes to show you how to use a cast iron. I always preheat my cast iron at um, medium to high, depending on what I'm cooking. So, so I let this preheat for, I never time it. I always just kind of gauge it. I would say a minute to a minute and a half to let the cast iron preheat. Once that's done preheating, then I put some oil on the cast iron. I use my finger, it's, my hands are washed, it's just my family. <laughs> um, but this is what I keep the coconut oil in and usually I just scoop it with my finger. That's what I do. <laughs> okay, the other thing with cast iron is Use way more oil than you would use if you were using a nonstick pan. When it comes to cooking on a cast iron, that is my number one tip. Make sure the cast iron is preheated before you put any food on there and use a ton more oil than you think you need. Okay, so that's pretty preheated. I know because when I put my hand over it, it seems pretty hot. I probably put three tablespoons of coconut oil. And I might even add more as the potatoes are cooking. I just kind of feel it out and see how much the potatoes absorb the oil. Uh, but since this isn't a video on how to cook fried potatoes, <laughs> I'm not gonna show you, you know, the whole process of how I cook fried potatoes and how I make them good and, and all of that. I'm just gonna show you from the perspective of this is how you do it on a cast iron skillet. I wait for that coconut oil to heat up quite a bit. And 
One of my other essentials for cooking with a cast iron is one of these guys. It's just a grip that you put on the handle of a cast iron because the handles of cast irons get extremely hot. The whole cast iron gets hot, which is great when it comes to cooking and having things cook evenly. Not great if you don't have any sort of protection. So once that oil is hot, you want the oil very hot, then you put on whatever you're cooking. Can you hear that sizzle? That's how you know that the oil and the pan uh, were preheated enough. So then you just wanna make sure that whatever you're cooking is evenly placed in the cast iron. So my potatoes are in a single layer and they're evenly dispersed throughout the cast iron. You don't wanna pile things too high because then that's when you get things that will stick. I use metal spatulas for cast iron, plastic, could melt because your cast iron will get very, very hot. Also, I just don't like using plastic anything, really, for that matter. So you could use silicone. This is just, I know you're not technically supposed to use metal on cast iron. I've never had an issue with it. I've never had any scratching issues. And like, if I think about it, cast iron is way more durable than this. So. I've never had an issue with it. I know it's not the right way, but it's the way that I do it and it works. So kind of like how you use, use a lot more oil than you think you need. You let whatever you're cooking sit on the pan a lot longer than you think you need. So these potatoes, I'm gonna let them sit and then I'll turn a couple, see if they're done and then I'll go ahead and flip them. But that's the other key is making sure that whatever you're cooking, whether it's potatoes or eggs or, you know, French toast, pancakes, whatever it is, make sure that it has a nice browning over it before you turn it because if not, it will stick. So the other thing about cast iron is that it does, depending on what you're cooking, if there's a lot of water in whatever you're cooking, then it will splatter. So a splatter guard is a really nice thing to have. I'll be honest, I am so used to hot oil splattered on me, so it doesn't really taste me anymore, but it is nice to have. Something else when it comes to cooking on cast iron is you want to make sure that the element that you're cooking on covers the whole bottom of the cast iron pan. Like if the edges aren't being heated up by the element, then that is gonna be where you have food that sticks. So make sure that you have the right size cast iron skillet for your stove. Lastly, when it comes to cooking on cast iron, know that the cast iron pan holds a lot of heat and it holds it way longer than a nonstick pan or even a stainless steel pan would hold the heat. So if you're cooking something and you want to let that food sit on the cast iron after, you know, to finish cooking, you're going to want to turn that element off way sooner than if you were cooking with another material. Another essential that I have when it comes to cooking with cast iron of gloves. I do not know how anyone who does cast iron cooking functions without using of gloves. I have regular like hot pads. There's no way that I'm gonna take a heavy cast iron full of food from the stove to the oven, like trying to grip these things and grip on, I'm just not gonna do that. That seems crazy. So I use of gloves and it's so easy. I just stick these things on my hands that look like Mickey Mouse and I use both hands to take the cast iron and stick it in the oven or take it out of the oven. Uh, with of gloves, I would say, make sure that you use both, especially if you have something that's really, like a lot of food in the cast iron, it makes the cast iron quite heavy and cast iron is already quite heavy. So use both so you can disperse the weight more evenly and you don't burn yourself. Because if you just use one and try and just muscle it out, you'll probably burn yourself because the heat, the cast iron gets so hot that the heat could definitely get through um, the glove. Now I'm gonna show you how to clean the cast iron after you use it. 
this is probably what people ask about the most is how to clean it in between uses so that you don't have to keep reseasoning like I showed you before. So this is what I do. My pan is still really hot, so that's why I have the oven glove. <laughs> but that's good. I, I do try and, and clean it when it is hot. Again, maybe this isn't the right way, but if I rinse it out while it's still hot, it's easier to get the stuff off. So that's what I do. So I just rinse it off and all I have is just a little bit of salt in there from cooking the potatoes. But I'll show you what this looks like just with doing those two rinses. So you can see just with doing those two rinses, like this is good. I'll do one more just for good measure, but I really don't even need to use my brush. Let's say some a little salt got stuck on there or maybe like a little film from the, the potatoes got stuck on there. I would just lightly take this brush, very lightly over top, just to lift up whatever's on there. And then I would do another rinse. And then that's what it looks like. Lastly, what I do, so after I get whatever's on there off, then I put it on the burner while it's wet and I turn the burner on high and I let the evaporation just take all that water out of the cast iron. This is super, super important. You don't ever want to leave your cast iron with water on it. It will rust and my cast irons rusted before because I left some water on it. So get all the water off before you put the cast iron away. Another tip too is if I'm cooking something that I use a lot of oil and I still have a lot of oil left in the pan, I will actually leave that oil on there. So I might, I might not even rinse it unless it's meat or something. I might just leave it on there for the next time I use it because I'm usually going to be using it that same exact day. And then that's less oil I'll have to use for whatever I cook. And sometimes even just with the light rinsing that I do, there will be oil left on it. So I'll still do the same process and I'll let the water evaporate, but the oil will obviously not evaporate. It will stay on the pan. That's good. I leave it on there. And then what I do, once the water has evaporated, I take my trusty coconut oil, dip my finger in it again, and turn the burner off. And then I put the coconut oil, just a little drop onto the pan and I let it melt on the pan. Sometimes I'll use a towel to like spread it around the whole pan to make sure it's around the entire pan. But you know, sometimes I don't even need to do that. So it just depends. Also, it acts as a nice moisturizer for after. <laughs> Basically, the more you use them, the more seasoned they're gonna get every single time you use it. So what I've done too is if I have one of my uh, cast irons that is looking a little rough, maybe things are starting to stick to it a little more than usual, I'll just start using that sucker like crazy. And that will be the pan that I exclusively use for whatever I need to cook. And then within a couple weeks, it's good to go. It's seasoned up and I won't even have to go through the whole oven seasoning process again just because I used it so much. Okay, so if I missed anything or if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Also, I would love to know how you cook with a cast iron skillet and how you clean it or how you season it if it's different than what I do, but it works for you. Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, if you would please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put out content every single week about clean cooking, non-toxic living, and an organized home. Thank you so much for watching.